Hey guys, welcome to episode three of Life as a Full-Time Braider, a fun, safe, transparent space for braiders to connect with their audiences through conversations. Now, today's guest, she is amazing. She has excelled within the braiding industry. She has hit multi-million views and reaches countless times on her social media platform, which is Instagram. She has also worked with some well-known names as well. Welcome, Savannah. Hi, guys. How are you today, Baze? <laughs> I'm good, thanks. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. Thank good. you for having me. Coming on. Thanks for having me. <laughs> All right. So before we start the conversation, we're literally just going to do like an icebreaker. Okay. And with my icebreakers, I try and make it resonate with the actual guest. Okay. So first, <laughs> heart design or dollar sign? <laughs> heart. Dollar sign is the hardest. Does it take quite long? It takes ages. Yeah. Whenever people book it, I, I hate it. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> when I first saw it, I was like, how does she do that? Have you done it? I've tried. Hard. but I just thought nah it's complicated you just gotta yeah gotta do you practice. get a lot of people asking about the dollar really. sign and stuff you know what? I don't post it much mm. so I tend I see like I tend to find whatever I post a lot is what people book oh okay so yeah because I don't post it much, yeah probably intentionally yeah so you know when you do like your heart box braids mm. do you think you'll ever do one with a dollar sign like no. dollar sign box braids no. that'll be sick <laughs> maybe but not anytime soon. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um, baby hair process videos or um stitch braid process. Stitch braid. Yeah. I feel like people love I don't know why. It's quite um as is the word aesthetic. Like therapeutic. Yeah, aesthetic, yeah, 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 yeah. Like when you look at it, it's just like calming. Yeah, it's nice. Yeah. And I think with the short hair, I've got one with like doing some with short hair and that That sounds bad. Like yeah. All right, lemonade braids or half stitch, half sewing. Half stitch, half sewing. That's one of my favourite styles to do. It is nice, you know. You like doing that one. I do, but I'm not that great at stitching. Okay. Do you know what I mean? Like, yes, I, you I, are. like not not at stitch braiding. I meant like actually stitching hair. Oh, I was gonna say you're sick. So of it's good and it won't move, but mm. some people lay it flat, isn't it? Like mm. I can't do that. Practice. Now, there's one thing that I've always wanted to get off my chest. Okay. <laughs> Has anyone told you that you look like Rashida oh, from Love right. and Hip Hop, <laughs> babe? You know when I first saw you, I was like, that is Rashida. I was having this conversation like two days yeah. ago. I told someone that everyone tells me that. Yeah. Even when I used to post videos of me doing people's hair with myself in it, I used to get so many comments. So yes, everyone. And I used I never, to love Rash- Rashida. She's the realest one out of all of them, I think. People say that. I've never watched Love and Hip Hop, yeah. but people, people do say. That was good. She's all right, nice. cool. Now we're going to get actually into the conversation, guys. Had to get that off my chest. <laughs> so how was your upbringing like? Um, wow, that was a yeah. good question to start with. Um, I had a really nice upbringing, um, with my mum and dad and my younger brother, they're very caring and nurturing, um, very encouraging, yeah, so I'm very grateful for my parents and my family. Oh, nice, nice, nice. Um, like, are you the oldest out of your siblings? No, so, well, I've got one full brother, he's three years younger than me, so he's yeah. 22, and then I've got three older brothers and one older sister. How does it feel like being... Only two girls out of so much boys. Um, because my older brothers are quite a bit older than me as well, so you kind of feel it's nice, you know. I feel quite protected and mm. like they're always there for you. They mm. feel more like I would say, not more like uncles, but they feel. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's quite. It's quite nice. It's nice yeah. having like strong male figures. In your yeah, life. that's good. I think that's healthy as well. Mm. You need that in your life. Like with yeah. us, there's like five. Sorry. There's five girls and one boy. Oh, gosh. So I feel like he feels left out yeah, 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 <laughs> a bit. Yeah. Any girlfriend he gets, I feel so Yeah, them. exactly, yeah. <laughs> okay, so you first started your Instagram page in 2017. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, everyone <laughs> says that. I'm like, how do you know? I didn't even know that. I've got to do my research. You've done your research. Um, and obviously, you've grown drastically since then. How yeah. have you um, built up your clientele over the years? Like, what? What kind of techniques have you used or has it just been quite fluent? Um, I would say it's been fluent. I never I never like set out to do hair. Mm-hmm. So I built my I started my page in two thousand and seventeen, but I've been how old was I then? That was like seven years ago, so mm-hmm. I was about eighteen. Yeah, about That's eighteen. That's a good time to start though. Yeah, but I've been doing hair as a job mm-hmm. since I was about sixteen. Yeah. But I was doing it before then for family and friends. So I feel like it's been quite natural, like progression and because I didn't set out to do I never thought mm-hmm. I'd be doing hair as a full-time job yeah I never found that pressure to try and find clients I'm kind of lucky in that way yeah did you also like do like family hairs first just to get that content out there maybe like friends and stuff yeah so um my little brother he used to have hair yeah. so I used to do his hair 
used to beg him to do his hair when he was younger. Yeah. He must be so happy. <laughs> yeah, he's got locks now. Um, I can read to this, but I don't. It's not my favorite thing yeah. to do. So yeah. I do it sometimes. And then my mum's hair. He used to do her hair, and then yeah, family, mm. friends. Yeah. Oh, nice. Okay, so <clears throat> from hitting 10k in December 21 to 50k in November 2020, 23, and now at 80k. In March 2024, like that growth is amazing, babe. And I really Thank wish you. that I really want you to know, like, be proud of yourself you. because you do, your work is nice, you know what I mean? Thank and you, so I feel much. like you perfected your content and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Could you describe how um, life was like for you during each of those milestones? So, for instance, when you was at 10K, how was your life during that time? Did anything happen or occur to make you like push more? in your work do you know what I mean like what yeah. what milestones were you at, at each of those stages so you said I started my page in twenty. yeah <laughs> so, so you, you hit 10k in December 21 21 so I was stuck on like 2,000 followers yeah. from about 27 no not 2017 but mm-hmm. for a few years and then I think I was on like 3,000 followers in like July or summertime in yeah. 2021 and then my dad passed away in August 2021. And I took about a month off, um, you know, just to deal with all the ups and downs. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then literally when I came back, I don't know what it is. I just got like a burst of motivation and um, I just, I was just fueled. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? And so I owe all my success to him. Yeah. So he died in 20 August and then. And I had about 3,000 followers. And then by December, I hit. Yeah. Okay, so honestly, that's all I can... Whenever yeah. people ask me that, it's just the same. And you know what you've done? You've literally turned pain into progress kind of mm-hmm. thing. Instead of like being like... Obviously, you went through the emotions of sadness, like why me, all those kind of things. Mm-hmm. But then you managed to turn it around and push yourself. Which yeah. is... That will actually... If you stay in that kind of mindset, that will help you throughout your, the rest of your life. Definitely. Like, like I said, he is... And my family yeah. and my motivation. Definitely. Yeah. Um, when you did hit your first million views on a post, I can't really exactly remember what post it was. <laughs> uh, I think it was a unprocessed video post, maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, how did that make you feel that you reached such a broad amount of people? Yeah, it was it was really exciting. Yeah. I remember I was watching the numbers as they were growing, and I was I probably screenshotted it like when I hit a million. But I was really, it was really exciting. Like I felt very grateful and mm. proud of myself, and yeah, it's nice. It doesn't even now like you never I never take it these things for granted because social media and it's so fickle that you can be doing great one day be getting a million views and then the next video you don't even get 10k views so everything I'm very grateful for yeah has that actually happened to you like when you've done a million and then yeah all the time like yeah do you feel like you kind of put yourself down when that happens I used to and I used to be obsessed with Number, not numbers, yeah. but I used to want all my reels to have it's not a stupid. certain number. Like, yeah. They just needed a K. Like, I just, yeah. you know, <laughs> just yeah. for my aesthetics, for myself. Yeah. Um, even like with likes, I don't really mind as much. Mm-hmm. And social media doesn't matter. Before I was, I had a lot of followers. I was still getting books. Yeah. So I don't pay too much attention. And yeah. I know now there's ups and downs. So exactly. I don't stress myself about yeah. that stuff anymore. Okay. On the back of that, what is your opinion opinion on like self confidence and self belief? Hmm. It's a hard one because you'll see you'll see certain people like in the same industry. You probably mm-hmm. can re- can relate to this doing certain things yeah. that you may not have done yet, or you see people getting certain opportunities. Mm-hmm. And sometimes it does. It's not a envious thing at all. Like you're happy for them, and, yeah. but you know everyone wants to grow. Everyone mm-hmm. wants to do well, so it can kind of um make you dampen your moods a little bit but I think you just also what helped me grow was just focusing on myself Mm -hmm. like just not watching anyone else just focusing on myself I spend a lot of time by myself as well um I like my own company and I love myself Mm -hmm. do you know what I mean so that's helped just through it's that tunnel vision it's just focus blur out outside noise people like be happy for everyone still show Support. Show love and support yeah. to everyone, but just focus on you and just know you don't know what is going on behind it. Like people might exactly. have looked at my situation and thought, "Wow, she's done well." Mm-hmm. But you don't know. I had to lose There's my dad. Something to get there. Yeah, yeah. 
So. And I do. I am a true believer of when it's your time, it will happen, and it could mm. be anything, anyone mm-hmm. in any kind of field, whether you're braiding, whether you're like an architect, any kind of field. Your time is your time. So, like I always say, try not to compare. Yeah. And always, I feel like it's important to like be your own competitor. Yeah. Do you agree with yeah, that? Yeah. yeah. Yeah, definitely. Just everyone's got their own lane, and just focus on what really yeah. looks like. And obviously Mm -hmm. this is like a follow-up question. Mm -hmm. Procrastination. Like you just said, have you ever procrastinated about something? I procrastinate all the time. Yeah. I'm procrastinating right now. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, I do definitely procrastinate. And I think being self-employed, there's no one to hold you accountable Mm -hmm. for anything. If we like were had a job, like we were employed by someone, you have your boss, your managers, Mm -hmm. your colleagues encouraging you, telling you what to do. But because we are in control of our destiny and where our business goes. Yeah. We definitely do procrastinate. Yeah. So you're at home with, are you at home with, you're living with your mum at the yeah, moment? Yeah, I live at home. When you first took on Brayden mm-hmm. and it started to get more busy, how did your mum feel about strangers coming in? <laughs> My mum's so, she's like, she's great. My mum, she's so encouraging. She's never had any issues. She's never complained. Um, She's always been my biggest supporter yeah. so she's never ever had a problem been an issue it. yeah never and her line of work as well we're quite used to having strangers in the house yeah so Is she in like the beauty business no well? but she's a child minder so she's oh, got like bless, a yeah. we've got like basically a nursery yeah so um yeah there's always mm-hmm. different people in the house so she's always yeah. one and welcoming the reason why i asked that question about how did you feel is because when i first started out mm-hmm. Obviously, I worked in Waitrose for like five years. Oh, yeah. I had my daughter, went to the Waitrose in Clapham. Mm. And then I thought, forget this, I'm going to do hair. Mm. And it was okay at first when I started doing hair at home. Mm. But then eventually, obviously, because at the time, it was, we moved. So it was my mum and my brother in the house at mm-hmm. the time. And it was okay. But then they started having an issue with people coming in. Oh. And I feel like I had a very closed mindset at that time because mm. it was kind of like, okay, you want me to pay bills and stuff. So this is bringing in that money to give you guys mm. to pay bills, not considering their space. Yeah, yeah, but at yeah, the yeah. time, I just felt like I used to do it in the, in the living room. And when I had clients, that's when everyone would want to be in the living room. Oh, but yeah. if I didn't have clients, no one, no one would want to be in there. <laughs> so I think it got to a stage where me and my brother actually had an altercation, like a fight. But it was my fault. At the time, I didn't think, you know, summertime, you're trying to get that lighting on your client. So I stood, <laughs> it's actually quite funny because I stood on his little like box outside and I broke it. Oh gosh. So that's them how angles, it started after high, that. Yeah. Angles, after that, it was just like, yeah, I'm not doing this anymore. Um, and then I went into a salon. Mm-hmm. But I do recommend that. Um, if you have the space to work at home, um, work at home, you'll just save a bit more money. I feel like salons are a really nice place to, um, network socialize but in regards to like saving money and stuff like that I feel like if you have a space at home definitely work from home so yeah you're doing the right thing babe because salons even to get a chair mm. is expensive you know everything in its time so yeah do you jump in the question would you like to get a salon of yours one day it's funny you ask that yeah. um that's amazing yeah just stay I tuned it. i will i will be visiting stay tuned um and that's exciting i don't know i've because i see a lot of people getting salons and that right now but i just i don't know if i want to get actually a salon mm. um and the reason being is because for one i may not want to do hair anymore in the next few years or i may like to travel around and i feel like when you have a salon, this is my personal opinion. Sorry, guys, I'm not talking about everyone, just me. Um, it, me personally, I feel like if I was to have a salon, I'll feel locked in. Um, and I got some advice from someone who's really high up in like um, the, the hair styling industry. And he actually said um, that he actually doesn't have a salon mm-hmm. because he doesn't want to be in the trap of actually get in a space, putting all your money into bills, yeah. putting all your money into electricity, all of that stuff. Mm-hmm. And then you're not taking home anything mm-hmm. at the time. So I feel like that's also, that was good advice, 
but it also has stopped me from actually branching out. And that, yeah. like, similar to you. Mm. Well, I've been thinking about getting a salon for ages, and I've got friends that have salons, mm. even some of my clients, and what was stopping me for ages as well. Everyone used to say, most people say they make more money at home, which mm. you probably do because you don't have all the overheads. Um, and for ages, I've been what stopped me is my mindset. Like yeah. I've been ready in other ways to have a salon for a while, mm. but I wasn't mentally ready. So I think you have to be, you have to be mentally ready. You can't just do it and not put your all into it because it won't, exactly, it won't work. Yeah. Um, and you've got to have a plan. Like I don't want to be doing hair myself forever. Mm. So I have a plan of how I can slowly. Yeah. And then you can train exactly. others. And then eventually like with me, I always had the mindset of, I wouldn't, get a salon or this is a rubbish mindset it's, it's not, rubbish. not it's, it's not but it's, it's not quite rubbish. smart but it's not at the same time because mm. you have to start somewhere mm. but I always said like oh I would only get salons if I could afford a chain of salons and train those people to work there so that mm. I don't have to be there and that's a good way of thinking about things mm. however you have to start somewhere you have first to start somewhere <laughs> do you know what I mean and sometimes you just gotta just like I say, yeah. be mentally ready, but sometimes you just got to do it yeah. and just, because if you yeah. have, if we have these thoughts forever, we will never do it. Exactly. So, so I think you're doing a great job. I wish you Thank all you. the best Thank on that. I can't you. wait. I haven't told many people, so. Yeah. Okay, <laughs> so guys, we'll get all the information at some point when at she's some ready. Point. Okay, cool. So do you, like, do you plan, because are you full braiding full time at the moment? Are you on? I've never had a job. Yeah, I've literally okay, cool. That answers that question. Then <laughs> <laughs> I was literally gonna say, um, how do you see your brand growing, other than the like getting a salon eventually and stuff like that? Um, that's a good question. Um, so like you said, it would be lovely in the future to have a chain, train yeah. people who can do it to my standard, yeah. have the same, use the same technique, so it's all standardized. Yeah. Um sell products with if we did like weave and stuff mm. it's it's easier like you sell hair yeah. it all links in isn't it's it all yeah linked in. but with braids selling expressions mm. isn't gonna make us money. <laughs> <laughs> um so yeah selling products yeah. selling like online courses i just want to i love to travel mm. so i want to be able to be like you as hands-off yeah. as possible yeah so just more like online mm. stuff and that's the way the world's going now yeah. everything's digital would you ever do like braided wigs? It's funny because one of my videos that I posted, mm. everyone thought it was doing um, some baby hairs yeah. um, and everyone thought it was a wig mm. and I commented like maybe I should make yeah. a braided wig. And there's, a, there's a guy, I, I, really like that. I know he's based in Africa. Um, I'm sorry, I don't remember the actual place in Africa. I think his name's called Kenny Wigs. Okay. He Check him out on Instagram. Mm. His wigs are banging. I really want to get him on this show. However, I don't know. Braided I will reach wigs. out to him. Braided yeah. wigs. Yeah, yeah, okay. braided wigs. Yeah. So if you ever want to jump into that, yeah. have a check, check him out and he's good. I was going to say, sorry, I don't. Yeah. I'm going to have a look at his work, but I've never really, I haven't seen many braided wigs that I actually like, like yeah. I'm honest. Mm -hmm. So maybe that stopped me. But if I see some that I like, yeah. 100%. That's the thing, because I feel like with braid, either the lace looks fake or mm. it looks bulky. Mm. But when I saw his, he was like, it's, it looks Even like you just I... braided your own hair. So, yeah. okay, nice. <laughs> so I've seen that you have posted on your social media. I think it was your story mm -hmm. that you wanted to create or in the process of creating an ebook. Yeah, yeah. Are you still considering doing that? I've already done it. I did it. Oh, girl, <laughs> you know, run me that. This is... <laughs> I need that. <laughs> this is the procrastination in me. I did it last year. Yeah. Um, But. You feel like you're just trying to perfect it. I'm just, not necessarily. I just oh, like I said again, because it's me doing everything. Mm. It's just where's he get the time? Just and marketing and stuff. Yeah. But I've I've done it, and I definitely I'm going to be putting it out soon. Yeah. Um, but yeah, perfect it more so the graphics, yeah. not really the wording, just the graphics. Um, I'm quite a perfectionist, so I like everything to be a certain way. Nice. Yeah. Okay. Would, what, would I do one myself or would yeah. I check your one out? No, but, well, I'm not sure. Would you do it? I'm not sure. Why? I feel like I'm in a bit of a, I would say a career crisis. I feel like there's a lot of things that I want to do. Mm. Um, 
but obviously being a mum of two and that's not an excuse but I just yeah. feel like I'm trying to figure out exactly what I want to do before I delve right deep into it this this is amazing yeah yeah, this is thank you great idea like and yeah yes it is good it is good and I do plan to I plan to travel with this actually Mm. because a lot of people that I want to interview they are abroad Mm. not even in America because you know all the braiders are in America but I feel like I want to get this platform platform to way much more than just interviewing braiders Mm. do you know what I mean like the plan is for them to start off braiding, but then excel mm. into comp- sorry into completely different careers. But they yeah. their base was braiding. Braiding, yeah, yeah. So yeah. that's the plan for this one. I so back to the ebook. I don't want you to tell everyone everything, but could you give a few bullet points of what um, can be expected in the ebook? Because I feel like that will help a lot of people, um, a lot of self employed people, um, in all kind of industries. Mm-hmm. So. I've made a, so I do one-to-one classes, yeah. so I've got a, I would say it's more like a manual, mm-hmm. it's a physical one, but I can sell it as an ebook. Yeah. so it's like a detailed step-by-step picture guide, how mm-hmm. I do stitches, knotless braids, preparing the hair, just all of everything. The basics, but the, is it like in, the foundation? In-depth. It's the foundation, but it's also quite, it's very yeah. in-depth as well, um, so I've got that, I've also got a section on social media and marketing. Yeah. That's what I need. So, so I'm gonna. So I've got it all as one, but I need to make the social media and marketing one a separate ebook. Oh, okay. I yeah. think I'll be more. That will be better for me to sell because mm-hmm. it's not just specific to just braiders. Yeah. Um, but yeah, just how to grow your profile, what's important, like what people look mm-hmm. for, like aesthetics, having clean backgrounds, um, choosing your color scheme, just angles, lighting, just everything that's um finding your niche mine is obviously stitch braid videos yeah <laughs> um and just knowing what your audience wants yeah. to see so it's all of that but more in depth exactly exactly and I think you've smashed it because um obviously sometimes you'll post like normal pictures of your clients isn't it but then you'll have the one or two videos of the process it's like it's like your audience is waiting for that video but that's so it's kind of like not... excites them I know what you mean but that's the thing because I because people love the process yeah. videos. I feel like people don't care about my oh, your videos work. anymore. Yeah. But it's still good because that's what your online audience and your clients yeah. are different. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So my online audience obviously want to see the... I'm sure they want to see the normal hair videos as well, but the stitch videos. But my clients, so people be like, oh, I booked this because you just posted it. Do you know what I mean? So okay. it's still good to post different yeah. hairstyles and post that as well. Yeah, nice. Can't neglect the clients. <laughs> exactly. Um... What is your favourite memory in both your braiding career and your personal life? <laughs> um, braiding career, doing... Oh, that was oh. really good. Is he quite... Um, is his energy quite cool? Or is he quite... Because, you know, some people can either say celebrities are, like, stuck up or they're quite chill and just... He was chill. Yeah. He wasn't stuck up at all. He was... I was... The story how I got to do it was quite funny. Like, I found out... <laughs> Half an hour before I actually did it. Oh, wow. I was on my way to Wireless. Yeah. And I have a friend, a very good friend, who has a friend who knows him and yeah. got through to Just me that least, way. Yeah. Um, so you cut out Wireless and then... Oh, I went Wireless after. Oh, so, <laughs> <laughs> so because I didn't have time to think about it, yeah. I don't think I would have been as nervous as I would have been if I knew from weeks oh, okay, before. Yeah. But I was really nervous going into it. And then when I went there, so normal, I just yeah. thought like I'm just doing a yeah. normal client. So that's probably the best experience. Personal. Um, oh, that's a hard question. Yeah, per- there's so much going on in our personal lives, yeah. isn't it? We've got so much memories. And- probably just something to do with my family. Yeah. Probably like a family holiday, just a family memory. Yeah. Oh, that's cool. <laughs> um, do you have any hobbies or activities that you like to take part in when you're not working? Because I know you said that you obviously like to sometimes take time for yourself by yourself enjoy your own company like what activities and stuff do you enjoy I'm so boring all I do is work and go to gym yeah and my gym could be that could be your let out like that could be a nice activity I love my gym like yeah. that is <laughs> that's my life I love going to gym spa like holidays I love going on holidays I live for holidays yeah. but yeah gym I'm a gym girl now yeah. about nine months now oh nice <laughs> 
Um, do you ever try and work out at home as well? Or do you strictly gym? I can't work out at home. I'm not. Yeah. I won't be motivated. I need to be in the gym environment. Yeah, yeah, that's what a lot of people say. You know, like they're not like it's hard to work out at home. Yeah. But with me, I don't know if it's because I'm forced to work out mm. at home. Do because you work out at home? Do you yeah, work yeah, out I have to because like I've got my little okay, one and then my daughter. So when they're like, obviously she's at school, but my little one's still with me. Mm. So it's hard to like because there's no gyms that actually you can bring kids in like that mm. have nurseries in there. My gym can. Yeah. My gym, they have like a, a crash for babies. Oh, and no. sometimes in the actual gym, I see people, I think you have to be 10. Yeah. But like people bring their kids Yeah, because, yeah, I've seen people bring their kids into the actual gym, but like 10 plus. Yeah, but, but it's good to say that yeah, the nursery, yeah. nursery there. Where are you based? Where, where, where what gym? It's what gym? David Lloyd's. Gym. Oh, sick. It's David Lloyd's. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All of them have, that, oh nice because yeah, I know so. quite a lot of people that are like oh I've got my child back I've got I'm going to recommend that well guys actually take a look at this video what's it called again is it his gym? no the gym oh David Lloyd's it's David Lloyd's <laughs> gym <laughs> free promo exactly <laughs> now this could be a quite a touchy question for some people like are you a believer in God if not that's absolutely fine no yeah I'm not okay so mm -hmm. Because you're a believer in God. I How do you feel like God has shown up and been present for you in your most trying times? Mm, that's a good question. So, back to my dad. Yeah. Um, like I said, after he passed away, I started getting a lot of opportunities and things just started falling, in, falling into place yeah. for me. So I owe that to my dad, but it's, it's God as well. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? So, yeah, I would say... He's just been there He's in your been quiet. There, yeah. yeah, but for my own comfort, I see it as my dad, but it's obviously God. Yeah. Well, but yeah, that's quite a nice way to put yeah, it. That's, wow. Yeah, that's, that's powerful. <laughs> okay, <laughs> how do you like to start your day? So, what's your 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 morning looking like for Sab? A work day. Any any day, whatever day could be a work day, could be a normal chill day. Just do work day. Yeah. Chill days. <laughs> <laughs> um. So I wake up an hour before I start shower get ready um have my breakfast I usually have like a big meal for breakfast yeah. so I have like chicken and rice oxtail, <laughs> fish <laughs> anything <laughs> dinner because if you've got a six hour hairstyle yeah. I need to eat exactly yeah make a protein shake so I can eat it or drink it while I'm working mm -hmm. um maybe watch a little YouTube video on my phone mm -hmm. and then go get to get to work get to in it <laughs> About you, what's your day like? <laughs> <laughs> so, if I'm in the mood to wake up, I try. I'm trying to do this five a.m. routine thing again. Oh, I was doing it um before in COVID, mm -hmm. um, but then I, I I just slacked after a while. So I'm trying to get back into that again because I have to be up early anyway. Okay. So I will wake up. I will work out. I'll probably do. I try and do an hour minimum oh, wow. now. So I have been doing that back to back every day for the last two weeks, just because I feel like it helps a lot with like my mental state. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Um, it's hard. I could. I was gonna say I could never. But girl, when you got screaming kids, it's like, no, nah, I'm doing this because that's how mm. I start my day, and that's what makes me happy. And then I will get ready. Uh, my daughter will get ready as well. Mm -hmm. Um, my son, I get my son ready. Mm -hmm. We'll have breakfast. If we don't have breakfast, that's probably because we're in a rush. We'll pick mm -hmm. something up along the way. Drop my daughter to school. By the way, this is a work day. I'm talking about. <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Drop my daughter to school. <laughs> And then, obviously, my mum will watch my son sometimes when I'm working or he'll be with me when I'm working. Okay. So if he's at my mum's house, I'll then drop him to my mum's. And then I usually start my working day at about 10 okay, okay. because that gives me an hour from yeah. dropping. Um, and then, yeah, I work up until I finish. Yeah. I've literally, back in the day, I used to work crazy hours, yeah. but now I try not to finish overly late. So maybe about six, I'll finish oh, probably nice. eight or nine latest. Mm. Then I will either cook before I pick up the kids. I miss this good step. So on the days that I work, my daughter's dad will pick her up and then drop her to my mum's or drop her to me. Um, and then, yeah, once I finish working, I'll cook or order. I'm not going to order some food if I'm too tired to cook. Um, but, you know, I've actually deleted delivery and Uber Eats now. Yeah. Discipline, 5 a.m. Girl, it's only because they done something and it was like, if you have, you have to update your phone to get the new version of Uber Eats or something like that. And then I was reading in their contract or whatever, the terms and conditions, you will be bound to this contract. And I just don't like the word bound. That puts me <laughs> off. So yeah, so I just deleted, deleted it. it. I deleted it. I need to Kind of that. regretting it, but, you know, <laughs> no, and then, 
and then yeah my daughter's bedtime's at nine o'clock and then I try I do try and go to bed when she goes to bed mm. sometimes it doesn't happen and yeah start the day all over again super mom yeah super mom <laughs> um yeah. if you could have any skill or talent what would it be um I've never thought about that um any skill or talent maybe being able to fly a plane because <laughs> I like traveling I don't yeah. know um would you ever do a helicopter because I feel um, like anyone could actually a fly helicopter. a helicopter you don't I'll fly it yeah I've been on a helicopter but I haven't yeah flown. is it scary going on a helicopter? not really no yeah I would never jump out of one. Would you? Would you skydive? Oh, I I was once a daredevil, but not anymore. Not anymore. I don't think. Yeah. You got kids to think about. Yeah, now. yeah, yeah. It does seem nice though. I feel like mm. once you've accomplished it, mm. it will be like a big win. Everyone says like when you're falling from a plane, yeah. like you go through every emotion. Like oh, it's, it? it's, oh, wow. it's it's like I think it's one of those things that you can't explain. Maybe yeah, you know, like childbirth. Like yeah, the feeling is just unreal. In it, unreal. Like. It's like rebirth mm. if you're going through every yeah, emotion. Yeah. Wow. All right. Could you share some advice mm-hmm. um, for our listeners, um, for anyone who wants to start a braiding business or a braid, any any kind of business, self-employment business, could you give them any advice? Um, what I, say? I would say just make the content, post, like I said, make sure that your work is, like your background is clean, aesthetically clean. Like I, even if I really like someone's work, if their, if their, if their place Aesthetic. doesn't look clean, the aesthetics, I'm sorry, I might not. That's, that's me. You know I've got I mean? bare stuff in the background. <laughs> no, your page is nice. Like your background is white. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not, I just, I like, I don't know. It just, that's, I think that is important to people. So just make sure everything looks clean. Start off how you mean to go on. Um, but just be consistent in posting. Don't beat yourself up if things aren't working straight away. Yeah. I've been doing hair for coming up to nine years now, and only in Time's the last flying, isn't it? two years am I seeing real growth. So that yeah. just keep, keep going. going. Um, try find try to look at your insights so you know what your audience likes, and stick at that. Don't just post that because you if you want to be diverse, but that's amazing my next question was obviously could you um let our listeners know how they can create clean content or whatever so I'm going to switch the question up a bit (laughs) could you give them some advice on the equipment that they could use Mm -hmm. um to make their content look a bit more cleaner than it is um ring light that's the most important I wouldn't take any high pictures without a ring light or good lighting um ring light Clean your camera. Clean the back of your camera. Wipe it before you take your pictures. You don't want it blurry. Um, I'm not the best with like knowing phone settings and camera settings and everything, but try have it in HD or 4K, whatever yeah. works best for you. Um, like I said before, have a nice clean background. Um, and yeah, just light in background sometimes. Yeah. Um. Okay, I don't know about this question and I've been debating whether to ask it or not because I don't know if it makes sense. So be honest with me if it doesn't make sense. Just okay. We're going to go there. <laughs> okay, do you feel like the braiding industry has become an entertainment realm or do you feel like it's actually grown and is has that has that ability to be like a profession? By that, I mean, I feel like it's good to show your face and stuff on social media when you're a braider because the importance of someone knowing who you are when you're braiding, mm-hmm. like with me, I, I wasn't showing my face. Mm-hmm. So people are probably like, who the fuck? <laughs> Do you know what I mean? But um, in a sense, okay, you know how there's a lot of people now that don't actually show their work. They just show like, what is it? Like the oh. reels of the writing and, yeah, and like all that stuff. Up. Do you feel like people jump onto what they feel like audiences like on social media instead of actually focusing on the actual profession of braiding mm. itself that's a good question um and I do see a lot of people saying like oh, I don't want to do, be a content creator I just want to do hair like yeah. I've seen memes like that um and I struggle with that as well because I'm a bit shy yeah so I could never talk to the camera like, <laughs> <laughs> show myself I get nervous yeah. doing 
like that. But because of the way social media is now, like TikTok and just, I'm not even good on TikTok, that's another thing. Mm. But all of that stuff, you kind of have to show yourself, like people bite into, we are our brand, mm-hmm. your braids for all textures, I'm um, yeah. South Styles. So people buy into that. So you kind of have to, um, it's a little bit, I won't say annoying, it's just something that we have to adapt to. The word adapt um, is good because times are changing, isn't Times it? are changing yeah. and it's hard. Like, what? I don't know how old you are, but I'm getting a bit older now, so I'm not as trendy. Girl, you are young. <laughs> I feel I'm, I'm still you're, young. You're but... 20 young. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm not as like trendy yeah. as I used to be. So, like, adapting to all these new trends mm-hmm. is hard, but it's it's good. That's another yeah. piece of advice. Stay on trend. Like, whatever's trending, jump on it because yeah. that will push your content. But do I feel like it is becoming entertainment? I don't know if I would use the word entertainment, but I do know what you mean. I do yeah. see a lot of meme kind of content mm-hmm. yeah. as opposed to just hair content. Mm-hmm. So I think it's good to have a balance of both. Yeah. And the reason why I brought that up as well is because a lot of people, I, I've, um like, when they had their original pages up, their work was amazing. Mm. And then I feel like they scrapped all their work and then started doing the whole, what I say is what's popular on social media. Do you know what I mean? And I'm thinking, some, it may come across as confusing, like, are you a braider or, do you know what I mean? Yeah, 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 yeah. I do know what you mean. So the key that I'm trying to say is don't feel like, obviously it's good to know like algorithms and all that stuff. Is that what they call it? Like, it's good to know the way social media is going because you obviously want your brand to grow. But at the same time, don't just, if your heart's not in following the, the social media ways, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Um, And it's worked for you the way you was working before. Then don't feel pressure to then change. Mm. I Do you agree. know what I mean? I agree. Stay authentic. All right. What is your biggest regret? Oh my gosh. I don't know if I can say that. One. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> PG. I don't think no kids are watching this. <laughs> no, 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 not whatever no. you feel comfortable with. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing like that. But um, my biggest regret. It sounds so cliche. But I actually don't regret anything. I feel like with hindsight, mm-hmm. I would have done cert- made certain choices differently. Yeah. Um, but I don't regret anything because I feel like you can learn. This is such a boring yeah. answer, sorry. I feel like you can learn from everything. But obviously, I s- regret maybe giving my time to certain people. Yeah. But... I've grown so much from... It's a learning curve. Yeah. It's like you... Yeah, it's not a regret. No, You just learn from it. But if I was advising someone, if they were asking me about a similar situation, yeah. um, I would tell them don't do that. But yeah. I've grown from it, um, from certain situations. Um, I've become stronger. And sometimes you need to go through certain things mm. to know your own strength. So, yeah. yes. <laughs> That's like me as well. I feel like in my personal life... I won't delve too deep yeah. into it. I don't, I personally don't regret anything that I've done because it's either taught me what not to do in the future mm-hmm. or I've learned from it mm-hmm. or I've, I feel like I've also gained certain things from it as mm-hmm. well in a sense that just understanding how other people may feel or do you know what I mean? Like communicating mm-hmm. with others a yeah. bit better. So I feel like in my personal life, yeah, the things that I've done, I don't regret because it's taught me a lesson. Mm-hmm. In my career as a, Radar. Mm, that's a good one. I feel like most of my regret probably falls in the financial because back in the day, I used to. These are the times I was working in Greenwich. I was making like a lot of money because I was doing like six clients a day. Mm. Obviously, I only had one child and stuff six like that. But clients braiding. Yeah, a day, you like must literally. Have been working. Yeah. Sometimes I'll literally be the first one in the shop, and then I'll leave at like five in the morning. This is on really? camera. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There was. There was plenty of times like that and it wasn't healthy. But I would say those are the times where a lot of my money was being made. But mm. I had the mindset of, um, oh, I'm just going to spend this. I can make it back tomorrow. Mm. That is the worst. And I probably mentioned this in the last video that I had with my guest. That's the worst mindset to have. And I feel like for um, for self-employed um, individuals who earn their money on a regular basis, it's hard to kind of pay yourself on like mm. one day a month, like yeah, people from wage. a nine to five. Yeah. Mm. So I would just say, don't have that mindset of, oh, I'm just going to make it back. Mm. Do you know what I mean? Collect it, 
make sure you pay yourself on a day each month like treat it as you're working for someone else yeah that's the thing don't treat it as yeah i'm just gonna make that i can make it just treat it as you're working for someone else and yeah i would say my business regret is probably the opposite to that i'm a bit um what's the word not stingy what's the word when you don't spend money you just like to do you save your money do you invest it I save my money quite well. I'm good at saving, yeah. but I wish maybe I'd invested sooner, like in certain things sooner, but I wasn't mentally mm. ready to do those things. So again, not a regret, but maybe not being as scared of my money. Okay, yeah. But, but um, you're still young now. Uh, yeah. Do you know what I mean? We're all still young, but I feel like you're at that stage now mm. where this is, it, it's kind of important that you go through these things mm. because then you know not what to do. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, so this yeah. is not, there's nothing wrong with that. You're mm-hmm. still in your 20s. You, you've done that now. Okay, I'm not doing that again. Mm-hmm. Or it's good that you know how to save. Mm-hmm. But now it's, I guess it's figuring out for you, what am I going to do with no, that? Got to spend the money now. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Okay, cool. This has been a really interesting conversation. At the end of every um, uh, podcast, I get my guests to ask me two questions. Okay. okay. It could be personal or mm-hmm. career. I've got them ready. Oh, gosh. <laughs> so what made you start this podcast? <laughs> I don't see other people doing it. So where did the idea come from? Uh, so the idea, I'll talk to you. Um, mm-hmm. The idea is basically I was actually going to write a book. So the book was actually called Life as a Full-Time Braider. Okay. I started writing it in COVID time. So mm. was I pregnant? With you? I was preg- also pregnant with COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, and that was just about like how I dealt with like working for myself mm-hmm dealing with a child, going through all the ups and downs, emotions, all that kind of stuff. And then I kind of had to realise that I'm not a celebrity. Do you know what I mean? Mm. So no one is actually going to care about my real life. Do you know what I mean? Because, you know, celebrities can write autobiographies and everyone's, it's not like that. Mm. So it's very rarely that you write a book and someone's actually going to care about it unless you're teaching them something. Mm. So then I had to think, okay, the way the world's going now, everyone's on social media or they're on the internet. I thought it would probably reach a lot more people if I actually do a podcast because podcasts are po- that popular right now. And yeah, that's that's yeah. I love it. I love that. Like yeah. I said before, this is a great idea. Yeah. I am in the middle of actually drafting my next book. I was gonna say, are you still gonna do the book? Um, not that book. Um, my book is actually gonna be called Journal of a Lifetime Braider okay. as a full time braider. Sorry, and it's literally just the raw. I like to write when it's quite late at night. Uh, or early hours of the morning because that's how I feel more then Mm. so it's literally gonna be like dated timed Mm. all my thoughts and feelings literally it's gonna be raw it's not gonna be like a like characterized book Mm. just like the raw me and your story is different because you've got two kids yeah yeah that leads me on to my next question (laughs) how have your how have your kids like have they motivated you? Like, what part do they play in your <laughs> career and, like, your motivation? They play... Uh, I feel like it's everything mm. for the kids. and But there's good and there's bad to it. Mm. From my experience, personally, um, obviously, you want the best for your kids. Mm. You want um, to teach them things that your parents maybe didn't have the knowledge to know. Mm-hmm. Um so in regards to them seeing me work for myself, I feel like that speaks a lot already, mm. that they don't have to be trapped in. Because if you think about it, they go to school. Mm. You have to be there at a certain time. You finish at a certain time. Yeah, yeah, you yeah. can't have the... Cre- like, uh, like my daughter's very creative. Mm. Schools kind of dampen down your creativity mm. or make you feel like just because you're out of the box, you're doing something wrong. And now they, cool. yeah, now they do like this merit thing, like, you have to be good to get a merit. If you don't get certain merits, you, you don't get to participate in certain things. Mm. And I feel like that can be very detrimental to children and their creativity. Mm. So I try and drill that into them that you can actually be anything. Do you know what 100%. I mean? Yeah. And I feel like don't get caught in the trap. of Because I was doing it with my daughter a lot before when I was working at Oh, I don't have money for this. Or I don't have money mm. for that. But you want to kind of teach them that that's not the case. Mm. You you want something, um, how do I get it? Yeah. Cool. Da, 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 I got to do this, this, this. Mm-hmm. And I feel like they're picking up on that. However, it's also hard because you feel guilty. Like my daughter's always like, oh, you 
always work. You don't spend, I spend all my time mm. with like my kids, unless I'm physically working mm. on my days off, I'm doing things with them or do you know what I mean? Mm. But they do do, oh, you just care about work or all of this stuff. So it can be quite emotional in that mm. sense. Um, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't change it. All successful people say like, yeah. have that, um, yeah, yeah. that guilt kind of, have trip. that guilt. Yeah. I was watching um, Steve with a Madman yeah. on Chunky Kids. <laughs> and he was kind of saying something similar because, yeah. you know, he had to put his kids on. Mm. Like, but that's how they've, that's how they've, he's become and his yeah. family, and being able to give so much to his family and be yeah. so successful. So you shouldn't feel yeah, guilty. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. they will, in time, exactly. realize and appreciate it. Well, like, they'll, they'll definitely appreciate it when they're older. Cause yeah. They'll see, right now, I get it, your kids, you just want to spend time. So I wouldn't change them for the world, and no. I feel like yeah, they've definitely it's been cool driven. Yeah, well. thank you so much. They are actually they are. I make good kids. I must you say, do, yeah. and I love when you do your daughter's hair. Yeah. I can't wait to do my daughter's. <laughs> She's gonna like be that. your model for life. Yes, hundred percent. Oh, thank you for having coming on <laughs> again, having me on. I've um, had you at the end. You know, <laughs> could you just let the listeners know like yeah. the platforms that they can find you on and so, stuff like that? TikTok, Instagram, Sav Styles. Um, I think that's all I have. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, just Sav Styles. S A V S S T Y L E S. Nice. And, and yeah. in regards to your ebook, yeah. once you get that up and running, or when it the time does come, yeah. where where could they find that? So I'll have like a link I've, I've on had, your page. Yeah, I've got. A, I've made like my website and everything yeah. as well. I'm just procrastinating, but there'll be a link to my website, and then you can buy it online there. Oh, amazing, Stay guys. Tuned. Stay tuned. It's Thank you, Savannah. Guys. She's been an amazing guest. Thank you so much. And yeah, see you soon. See you. Oh, okay.